Welcome to the Enjurati studio. We're located at the Asian Utility Week in Bangkok. And in the studio with us today, we have Hugh Wilkinson. Hugh Wilkinson is the Senior Director of Strategic Markets for Silver Spring Networks. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you for the time. How are you finding the conference so far? The conference has been excellent. There's right. been some very good attendance. Yep. And uh, it's always one of the more successful events in, uh, in Asia that we attend. Right. So it's very good, very well run. Um, we were just um, uh, we were going to have a chat about um, uh, exactly what your company offers. It sure. um, obviously has a, um, a global reach, and uh, would yes. you like to discuss sure. exactly what you bring to the table? Sure. So SuperStream Networks is the global leader in smart grid platforms technology. Yeah. So we provide a variety of technologies, communications, hardware, software, systems, consulting, and expertise. Yeah. And uh, our technology reaches. Uh, predominantly the power sector, but we're also breaking out into other infrastructure, including smart cities, street lights, uh, and other uh, public benefit technology systems that we're uh, being asked to be involved in. Right. What opportunities do you see in this region at the moment? Uh, the opportunities in this region are significant. Um, Asia is going through unprecedented economic uh, expansion and also social change. And so you have significant pressure on government and on society to actually improve living standards, living quality. And so to do that you've got to implement smart infrastructure. And smart infrastructure involves smart grids, smart utilities, and basically managing and measuring what you use and how you use it far more effectively. Right. And so the opportunity for Asia is huge because they need to digitise their analogue cities. Right. And that's how we describe it. Okay. Yeah. And, um, what is frustrating the, the development of um, um, smart grid um, and smart cities in this region? <coughs> There's a lot of learning and experience from other regions. They've already embarked on this uh, endeavour, this journey as we call it. And what we're finding is that everybody thinks they have to test and trial and reinvent the same thing, rather than speaking to each other as a community. Uh, traveling or even communicating with other engineers, other companies around the world, <coughs> learning from what went right, what didn't uh, work so right, well, right. and not repeating the same mistakes and actually having to relearn. And there's this very conservative nature uh, of doing pilots, of doing little tests, um, which tend to impede and slow down the adoption and the benefits of these sort of technology platforms. Yeah. These have been now in place for seven to ten years and some of these yeah. uh, technology platforms and smart grids have been going into a refreshed life cycle. They've gone through one entire generation. So there's a lot to be learnt from other regions. I think that's very important and that's what's impeding Asia from actually getting speed and going quickly and getting those benefits that they so desperately need. Right. Does this re do you think that this re region is getting a lot of government support or do you think it could be better? The, the challenge you have is you're bringing a fundamental change. You're digitising cities and the last time we digitised our lives was with the internet. So you had Facebook and all these challenges to social media that came with it. Yeah. Governments struggle to understand that mm -hmm. but governments need to engage and learn and inform yeah. and there needs to be a lot more support from government right. to utilities to major infrastructure owners to actually engage and embrace this transformation which is coming. And if they don't, or one government gets it right, one government gets it wrong, then the nation will be less competitive right. than its neighbour. And so it's quite important that governments actually embrace this and right. start to help make this change happen. Right. Um, with regards to, um, you're obviously a global company, um, yes. do you want to share a few of your successes with us that might be relative to what you are trying to do here in Asia? Sure. So. The most successful projects are the ones which benefit the people. Yeah. You can deploy technology and you can make efficiency gains within the utility, but unless the consumer benefits, then you need to really look at your program. So right. our most successful projects are in places like o Oklahoma Gas and Electric, Florida Power and Light. Yeah. Um, we've had some very successful projects in New Zealand now. Um, which, are, which is a complex market where consumers are benefiting, getting choice, getting savings and getting that involvement in these projects. And so they're the projects to learn from and from a consumer engagement perspective that's something you can also learn from because they seem to get it right. I mean uh, Oklahoma is not, was not known as being the most energy efficient, energy aware place in the world. They, they, they tend to be more seen uh, for other things, big, big cars, big kind of American type lifestyle and yet we were completely wrong. They embraced smart grid, yeah. they drove change, yeah. 
they saved a lot of money and the government actually benefited. They didn't need to build two power stations for 10 years, so there's a large benefit that flowed through. Very good example of how to do a project. With regards to um, customer engagement, um, yeah. um, I, I don't think it's just one particular region that's struggling with it. I think mm. um, Europe, the States, I think it's just an ongoing mm -hmm. um, sort of mind-boggling um, science that um, everyone's mm -hmm. trying to get their heads around. Yeah. Um, what do you recommend with regards to customer engagement? How should utilities go, go about that? Well, they have, to, they have to communicate. And uh, utility, there, there are different ways in which you communicate, and there's an entire community engagement program, which is equally as complicated as the technology. Yeah. But again, there are proven methodologies and ways of engaging with people. And you've got generational challenges. You've got an analog generation. Right. They're the ones that are retired or retiring. Yeah. They are the ones that really know how to get more out of less. And when they actually adapt and use smart grid technology, they actually save a lot of money. Right. I mean, elderly people use iPads as well as young people when yeah. they've got the right applications. But the way in which you communicate to them is different to someone who's 25 years old yeah. and is wearing a Fitbit watch and yeah. doing all those sort of social media right. and living in that digital world. So you have to have an engagement that actually scales generation and also scales the complexity of the message from generation down to people who are interested in the technical right. aspects of it. And that's really important. Um, interestingly, the people who, as I said, in Oklahoma who did really, really well were the older people. They were more interested, they had more time, they wanted to get more benefit, but then the grandkids got really excited too. Yeah, and yeah. they brought the, they showed them how to use the technology and it was very, very interesting. Um, another, another really interesting project was uh, the Solar Cities project in Perth in Western Australia, yeah. where there was, an, there was a very determined social engagement and from the very beginning they brought the community along with what they were doing, the expectation. And the measure of success of that project was consumers were ringing up saying, when am I getting my technology? I want it. And that was a measure of success in another way in that project. Um, and that was a digitisation of power as well as consumption, as well as many different aspects. The reason that's an interesting project was you had a separate billing company, a retailer, versus a distribution power company, and yet yeah. they were able to actually make that work together. Right. So that's, okay. that's a very good example so of really how you do that. So it really is just engaging from the, from, the, from the go. That's and, right. Um, and, and get them on board right from that's the beginning. That's right. And communicate. And, yeah. and don't expect people just to adopt because... To accept the new technology. That's right. That You've got to explain it to them. Yeah. Indeed. I mean, the benefits are obviously um, paramount. Without uh, them understanding the benefits, they're not going to... They're not going to support the investment. I mean, if you get a bill and there's a component on there that you've got to pay for and you don't know what it's for, what are you going to do? You're going to, get, you're going to ask the question, aren't you? You're going to want to know. If you know, you'll accept that, that cost. Yeah. Where do you see the Asian region with regards to smart city and smart grid development within the next, say, five to ten years? Are they on track? Uh, I know that it's a huge region, um, but um, in general? Look, the, the challenge for the region is, as I said earlier, they need to look at what works around the world, right. what's proven. Um, as I mentioned, there's, there's successful projects, there's successful technology deployments, they're based on standards. The region can avoid risk and avoid the mistakes and can go a lot faster yeah. if it learns from other regions and adopts those standards because the one thing about Asia is it's very good at adopting technology, it's very good at innovating around technology and creating technology and it's a, it's a huge economic uh, potential for this region. Uh, Singapore is a project that uh, is already commenced and is running in a right path and Singapore is looking at it as a smart city. Yeah. It started out as a smart utility but to their benefit Singapore is an innovative society and they're starting to look beyond that. Um, there are other uh, regions that are getting very serious about all kinds of smart grid projects so yeah. from microgrids and providing power to remote communities and schools to digitising big cities like right. Bangkok or Jakarta or, or Hong Kong or Kuala Lumpur, any of these large cities are all going to benefit from it. Are they on track? Hard to know what the track actually is. Uh, could they get lots of benefits very, very quickly? Absolutely, if they were to go fast. As I said, proven and standards based is the way to do that. My last question to you, mm. um, as you walk away from the event today, yeah. um, what would be your final um, piece of advice or recommendation to both the, um, the utilities here and um, the government? 
My advice is look at what's working around the world. Right. Go and talk to those people as to why it's working around the world and choose things which are proven that are being deployed, that are working. Uh, choose the consumer engagement programs that are working, that are engaging with the people and don't be afraid to step, make those steps because yeah. others are doing it. If you don't, your neighbour will and you won't be as competitive as your neighbour and you'll get left behind. That's my advice. All right. Thank well, you. that's all we have time for today. Thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome. And um, I, I trust that the last uh, hour or two um, <laughs> will be, will be a, a good last two hours. Thank you. Um, thank you to our viewers um, for joining us. I trust you enjoyed the interview as much as I did. Um, please feel free to click onto all the other interviews that we've been carrying out during the course of the event.